This is the UR Business Network. Hi, and welcome to the New York Real Estate Journal radio show. I'm Eric Wilson alongside Rick Kaplan, and this show is brought to you by the New York Real Estate Journal, bringing together the commercial real estate industry for over 25 years. Find us at nyrej.com. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor for the show, call 800-654-4993 or email us at radio at nyrej.com. Again, that's 800-654-4993 or email us at radio at nyrej.com. And we're joined on the phone by Duke Long, and you are the broker owner of the Duke Long Agency? Uh, yes, I am. And, and thank you, Eric and Rick, for having me on today. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, we, well, we see you all over the Internet. Uh, we follow you on social media. We see that you're a big blogger. How is it to build your own brand uh, by yourself? Am I correct? Yeah, pretty much. I, uh, to kind of a quick story. A good friend of mine is a big residential agent here in the Indianapolis area. He's been on HG, HGTV, and he's on the, the local television. He and I were volunteering together, and he said, hey, why don't you start writing and look into some of this social media stuff? This was years ago. And I'm like, hey, I'm a commercial broker. I don't <laughs> care about those things. I don't pay attention to that stuff. To make a long story short, I did write something for him, and he put it on a national website, and it got thousands and thousands of hits. And I stood back and I said, hey, wait a minute here. There might be something something to this. So I paid attention to some of the residential people at the time because at that time there were hardly any people in commercial real estate doing social media or online activities. So I kind of paid attention to them and I was able to start building up a following and a brand maybe – because I was a, a little bit of an early adopter. I think that helped quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Well, I also think once you have your name out there and and you have story or articles that you have posted, people recognize the name now. So you have created yeah. that brand. Yeah, and part, part of what has enabled me to build that brand is having an opinion about commercial real estate. An opinion meaning things that are good, things that are bad, things that I think could be better. And people also read that and think, hey, I think that too, or I may disagree with you, but at least you have an opinion about your business. And I think also through some of the things that I write, it shows that I have a passion for commercial real estate and people, you know, they they resonate with that. So I know that, well, I know that you were uh, successful. When did you start your blog? About well, I've had a couple of different variations of it. Actually, I'm I'm in the in the right now. I'm starting to rework it a little bit. But it was about three three or four years ago. I'm into my third version of it at this point, and I posted probably about 400 articles. I try to consistently post two articles every week, and I that's one of the keys that I think has helped me build my brand is the consistency. Right. If you're going to read anything that I'm doing, you know every Sunday and every Wednesday I'm going to put something up there. It may be about Jones Lang LaSalle. It may be about some weird mobile tech thing. But every twice a week I'm going to put something out there. So how has that been coming? Well, because we, as in social media, we get a lot of questions about, you know, where am I going to get content from? How am I going to do all this writing? What am I going to write about? How has it been for you coming well, up yeah, with consistent content? But it's content? also the misconception of social media. A lot of people still think it's a, a selling tool. Well, you know, it's not so I, you much. Know, there's all kind, the great thing is there's all kinds of idea generators out there now where you could actually Google that and come up with 50 ideas. What I've been able to do is, First of all, the things that go through my head, I've written so many different articles where, as an example, one, I went through a process of getting a project through the area plan commission and that whole thing. That, that, there's 10 articles right there if you really want to write about them. Or a situation where I was showing a building and I was sitting outside freezing my behind off in my car. So these ideas come from everywhere. They also come from online things, a lot of reading. One of the things I try to do is use Evernote for everything, taking pictures, putting ideas in. That helps me get those ideas going. I also have people, God bless, who email me with ideas. Some of them are crazy. Some of them not so much. So it just comes from everywhere. And I try to consciously have a database of ideas 
then I go back and research them and decide what I'm going to put out. The greatest thing anybody can do for me is give me a video because I'm lazy. And if you give me a video, <laughs> I will post it up <laughs> because in two minutes it tells a beautiful story about what's going on. So, so, so it's more any, or less any of that type of content. It's like. more or less a, what is Duke Long thinking? You know, every, all, all your thoughts. Duke Long's thoughts. What? what are you thinking about? You know, that's it, a, that's it, what you're talking about, more it, or less. It's uh, isn't it, uh, Duke? Isn't the title uh, commercial brokerage with an attitude? Yeah. Well, I, I think the attitude part comes from <sighs> how can we push our business forward? Why are we doing this this way? Why can't we do it this way? The beauty, I think, about some of the stuff is some of the technology is changing the way that we have done some things. Having said that, there are people that can be on social media or, or never be on social media, never mess with any technology and make a good living and good for them. There are also people that are adopting that technology. So I think my thoughts come from how can we use some of this technology to push some things forward? How's it changing the industry? Uh, the big data, apps, all these different kinds of things. So that, uh, the attitude also comes from why aren't we changing? Why aren't we progressing? So, Duke, what do you, how do you think all of this is coming into play now? Is, has it been changing our industry? Well, here's a great example. Three or four years ago, there were no real startup companies who were trying to do or build anything within what's called the commercial real estate vertical. That's a fancy word for the commercial real estate tech thing. Right now, on AngelList, there's 300 companies that are trying to do something. I'm pretty familiar with about 20 of the top companies that are out there doing things. A great example is the one I just posted up called Pivot Desk. They help you find, they help building owners also find tenants for their unused space. Now, that's a valuable thing to do. Uh, for Two Floors, one of my great companies, they're out building basically a new database. Uh, view the space. I think you're going to interview them. Yeah, right. They go out and help market properties in a way that has never been done. And I love Nick and all those guys. Comstack. These companies did not exist three or four years ago. Now they've all went out, started with two, three or four people. They went out and raised three, four, five, six, ten, twelve, eighteen million dollars. They've got thirty people in an office just working on these problems. To me, that's brilliant and fascinating. And who knows what they are going to do. But I think there are some things that will change. The mobile part of how we have done a transaction, I think, is even changing. There's a company called High Rise that's backed by Joan Lang LaSalle. You can get on their site. You can lease space online. Here's the complete transaction. You can pay for it. You can sign the agreements and everything. Wow, so I think wow. that's going to be a big difference. And again, they're, they're backed by Jones Lang LaSalle. Right. It's not like it's just a couple of guys saying, hey, this is a good way to go. But, yeah, is that beneficial to the broker? You know, because now... Well, they, they, good, good, good point. Um, <laughs> I had many conversations with tenant reps who say, hey, you're disinterminating what my value is. My answer to that is if you have a lot of value, the customer is always going to use you anyway. Just because you can do a transaction online doesn't mean you're going to do a transaction online. Uh, as you mentioned, the next five years or so, I think we'll see some of that, but it's not going to be all of that. Uh, part of the online stuff is to make a personal connection to then do some business. Anybody that I have met and done business with in the last three or four or five years is because of my online activity. That doesn't mean I don't go to the conference, state conference thing I'm going to next week, or I'm going to the crew network golf outing. Uh, next Wednesday, you know, you still do those face-to-face -face things. But I think some of these online tools are enabling people to make that transaction experience a lot different than we've ever thought of before. So it's a much easier uh, experience as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to use a quick example of the last three cars that I bought, I bought online. Everybody right. said, well, you bought a car online? Well, I didn't go to a car dealer to buy them. I bought them online. Now, that's right. me as a consumer. And it was just a transaction for me. It wasn't the experience that was important to me. Is that going to be different with a commercial real estate building? Probably. But I think a lot of that transaction can be a lot different. 
the great thing about brokers is that they are the catalyst for a transaction that creates a lot of business around that transaction. So that's the other interesting part. There's a company called Honest Buildings. They are creating conversation around the transaction. That's another one of those great startups, by the way. Mm -hmm. So what does it evolve into? You know, if I knew that, uh, I don't know, I'd be a VC. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess it's a way of everyone has to adapt to some of the new concepts that are coming out. Yeah, and are they all going to work? I doubt it. You know, I doubt it. Uh, But having said that, a a great company like CompStack, who basically set up a platform for brokers to share comps between each other. When is that a bad thing? That Hmm. helps the brokers do what? Create a better transaction for their client. So is that a negative? I don't think so at all. Right. No, and it's, it it makes the uh, uh, a lot of these new things that are coming out for the brokers. It it also cuts down a lot of the time that they have been wasting. You know, they don't have to show as many properties uh, because it, it can be seen online. They don't have to worry about doing all of, of they their can vet their prospects a much yeah. further before they actually have to get on put boots in the ground. Right. They don't have to I do agree. as much legwork. When when is that a bad thing? Are they going to be more informed? Having said that, if you're a small business owner and you're looking for five or 10,000 square feet, most likely as a business owner, you do just about everything. You certainly want a professional to help you go find that space. Mm. I know I would, even though I am a broker. There's right. 5,000 other things you need to be doing mm-hmm, right. as opposed to that. So that's not, bad. that's not a bad thought to have that representation. And some people don't want to take the time to dig that deep. Some people do. Right, so right. I still think we're in that transition part of that. I, I, well, we're talking about the the industry evolving with the technologies and how that aspect's really weighing in on us. What about the idea of people wanting and using less space than we did before uh, in in offices and uh, in the cubicle ideas? Before it used to be, you know, each person carved out a certain amount of space. Now we're using much less space. How does that shape the market? Well, a couple of things. I you know, if, if you're a building owner and you got a million square feet, you want it all full at the highest price. Let's be honest. That's, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Having said that, if you're a business, you, you know, if you are a business, you want to have the most efficient use of that space. Mm-hmm. I, I think part of that is becoming, and it's been, it's called the workplace environment. That's been about a 10 year thing that's been going on. Why not use less space, use it more efficiently? It's better for who? It's better for the environment, better for the human beings, it's better for the buildings. I think it creates more value for commercial real estate because there's a higher and better use there. If that space is 10,000 square feet and it's junk and nobody's using it, then maybe it needs to be repurposed. Maybe it gets repurposed faster. Maybe that's not a bad thing. Uh, because if it's going to sit for five years empty, it's not doing anybody any good or making anybody any money anywhere. Right. So the use less space. Uh, uh, you know, if I go to a meeting this afternoon at a coffee shop, I didn't use a building in what way? I use the coffee shop in a certain way. So people can work from just about anywhere. I think it makes commercial real estate a more valuable commodity, in my, in my opinion. No, How and I, I agree with you. I definitely agree with you. You know, it, uh, you, know you also... Some people might want a certain area, and the only space available might be 10,000 square feet, but they only need 5,000, and they work out a deal where they're paying for 5,000, but they get the 10,000, but they don't need all that space. You know, yeah, they don't need it. What are they going to do with it? Right. Put a ping pong table in there? You know, so, so some markets are going to be much different. If you're in San Francisco... It's an amazing market in the sense that people literally are trying to look for space because they know if they don't get it now, it'll be three times higher in two or three years. Mm. Not every market's like that. So that's a different dynamic. I think the most efficient use of space is what? If you're going to have 5,000 square feet, you want to squeeze in there and maximize it to, you know, maximize its potential and then try to go to the next. So let's take 10 and let's grow into it. I don't think a lot of companies have that mentality anymore. They can't afford that because what commercial real estate is usually their second largest outlay behind human resources. So that's a pretty big decision to make. Yeah, now it sounds like you're you're very adaptive to the market. 
and um, probably because you keep on top of what's going on through the social media, blogging and getting comments back from uh, people that uh, do follow you. I, I think that's probably important this, in this day and age, being a, a broker. Uh, very much so. I mean, one of the things that's fascinated me personally, and here I'm stuck in the middle of a flyover city, uh, thank, thank you very much, by the way, but <laughs> you know, I can get connected to anybody anywhere. I get calls from Barcelona. I get emails from Australia. I get, you know, constantly from Colorado, from New York, from San Francisco. So you're connected to everyone. Having said that, I also think one of the keys that I've talked to a lot of people about in different environments and, and panels and things is that you're able to connect locally like you never have been able to before. People can find you. People will find you. People will look on LinkedIn. People will call your boss. They will look at your boss and see who your boss is and who your company is. That's not a negative at all. So there's a, a bit of that, what's the word, crowdsourcing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the ability for that client to seek you out. So there's that collective, that's what I'm looking for, the collective consciousness of commercial real estate. And there's a network that's out there that, that never existed before, and it, it's fantastic. Do you think that, that you've been blogging now for a few years? Do you think the blogging has has helped your business and, and raised awareness for who you are? Because I, I know a lot of people say, you know, how do these things help me? How does what's the ROI on whether it be social media oh. or blogging? All right, here's a great one. What's the ROI on your mom? What's the ROI on your mom? My mom's awesome. So yeah, mine's no ROI on my mom. Uh, uh, mine's probably about go, ten grand. Right? <laughs> I can't imagine the people that I would have met, communicated with without this online thing. I could have never done it and still done deals, but it's helped my career. It's helped my bottom line. It's helped all of those things. And I, you know, I, I admit, I was one of those brokers, one of the last human beings to get a cell phone. I didn't like my picture taken. <laughs> I'm doing my deals. I'm doing my thing. Ironically, I've kind of went 180 degrees, but the ability for people that didn't find out who I am, what I do, and how I do it, and then want to connect and do business with me, you know, it's unprecedented. It's, I just can't imagine, and this is going to be a weird statement I'm going to make, but everybody that I've met is because of Twitter or my blog. Everybody. I, there's nobody who doesn't not know me mostly from that. So... Yeah, so yeah. No, I'm going to say I'm the, it's the same way for me. No, I, I, everybody I've met in this industry, I've met either through Twitter. But I'm, or I'm not, but I'm kind of impressed that you know you went from not having a cell phone, yeah, to right. going to uh, you know heavy into the social media and you know. And this yeah, is, I, you know. Well, I don't know. I just maybe one day I had a moment, but I I'm old school in that whole. Let's hit the doors. Let's hit the street. You know, let's play golf. Right. All that old school stuff. And again. That stuff still works, but part of the adapting and changing is here's the environment that we're in now. Why not embrace some of it? Some people may think it's over the top. What's, what's wonderful about it is that it still shows the authentic human being that you are. You know, if you're going to be not so smart and not so good, it's going to show up. If you're brilliant and well-written and well-read and you know your stuff, it's going to show up also. I love that part of it. So it's good to have the mix, basically. I, I, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, I still do all the other networking opportunities. I'm on my way up to Chicago tomorrow to a launch party. And, there's, you know, I'm networking just like anyone else. Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing. The, the only reason to be online is to connect to someone and get in front of their face and then make that connection. That's the only reason I do anything online. Well, Duke, we, uh, Duke, we really appreciate you coming on and joining us. Where would someone find more information about you? Follow along your blog, check you out on Twitter, or even contact you via phone if that's uh, if you would allow that. Uh, how would they go about doing Absolutely. that? Absolutely, DukeLong.com. I'm not hiding. <laughs> that's it, DukeLong.com. That's easy to remember. <laughs> yeah, that is easy. <laughs> is, is, is your Twitter handle at DukeLong as well? Yes, it is. Oh, so you are you are definitely an early adopter when you can get your uh, no underscores, no initials in there. You actually get your whole name. Yeah, my name's pretty unique, and I won't tell that story 
But, <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, it was funny. Rick was asking about that earlier. I uh, wanted to know how you uh, the name Duke was uh, given to you. Yeah, John Wayne. That's the first thing I think actually, of. Actually, it, uh, it's from my grandmother, God bless. So Fantastic. It's a family name, and I'm very happy with it and very proud of it. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today, and uh, we wish you luck in Chicago. All right. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate the opportunity, and get a hold of me anytime. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank Duke. You. And that was Duke Long, the broker owner of the Duke Long Agency. And the interview was brought to you by the New York Real Estate Journal, bringing together the commercial real estate industry for over 25 years. Find us at nyrej.com. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor for the show, call 800-654-4993 or email us at radio at nyrej.com. Again, that's 800-654-4993 or email us at radio at nyrej.com.